Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to another part of this tutorial on how to structure your Go application by making use of the hexagonal architecture. After getting some additional input from both Alistair Coburn and Juan Manuel de Paz, a programmer that helps to reduce the spread of misinformation regarding what characteristics actually define Hexarc and what are personal preference, I felt that it was important for me to add some revisions to this application as well as distinguish what parts of my explanation are HA or Hexarc and what are additional design choices made by me. One of the most important distinctions that should be made is in regard to the application layers. Although there are a few implementations to be found online that implement Hexarc with multiple layers, the layers within the hexagon aren't actually a part of Hexarc. Those are just additional design decisions made by the developer, or me in the case of this application. The structure of the inside of your application can be what you choose, but it should be clear that the way that you choose to design the inner hexagon is not part of Hexarc. So my addition of a domain app split within the hexagon is an additional design decision and not defined by Hexarc. In my previous explanation, I mentioned that this entire hexagon is the application, but that's actually wrong. This framework layer here is actually where our adapters sit, and the application actually starts at the application layer here, which is a very important distinction that I did not make. That is, the API port interface is a technology neutral entry point to the application. This distinction is important because the actual application shouldn't contain frameworks to talk to real world technology. The application or hexagon boundary should be the use case boundary with no technology framework code inside. That's why the left and right side ports of our application layer are just technology neutral interfaces that can be implemented by any adapter or type that implements one of those interfaces. Another mistake that I made in the previous video was that I used ports and adapters to connect the inner layers of the application. But the ports and adapters should be reserved for the application boundary to avoid confusion. And what I mean by that is, naming the inner layer interfaces ports and the types that implement the inner layer interfaces adapters is something that should be avoided in this case because it makes it difficult to distinguish between the ports and adapters that are at the actual application boundary. And with these things in mind, I've actually decided to restructure the application to make things a bit more clear. For example, we'll no longer be naming the interfaces within our hexagon ports, and the types that implement those interfaces within our hexagon will no longer be called adapters. I've also restructured the main.go file to make things a bit more clear, which we'll go over now. Okay, so I've actually cloned the repository from the original video into a separate directory and added all of the code changes to a branch that I named revisions. So the branch revisions you can see here. And all of the changes that I've made are here. And what we can do is we can commit these changes and create a new pull request for this branch and have a look at the comparison between this branch and the main branch of our remote repository so that you can see all of the changes that were made. And if you're looking to make the changes to this application on your local machine, you can also just check the history of the remote repository or just pull the new version of the application from the remote repo as well. So what I'll do is I'll git add all and then I'll get commit m revised hexarc. Thanks to good status, clear. And now that I've committed the changes, I can just do a git push origin revisions. And now I can access the link here to create a pull request for the revisions branch. So we'll go ahead and just click that. And from here, I have the option to create a new pull request, and I'm requesting to merge this revisions branch that I just made the changes to with our main branch. And if we go down here, we can see the changes that were actually made. And we don't need to load the diff for git ignore, but for our main.go file, we can see that we have some changes with our imports here because I moved the core of the application, this arithmetic package, to the same directory as the application API, so both of these are contained within this application folder. 
And I've also removed this section here with these port variables here to make the code cleaner, and you'll see why in just a second. And the database adapter is pretty much the same thing, I just changed the name. But when we get down here is where the real changes are made. So basically, first of all, the arithmetic package no longer has a function to create a new adapter because we're not going to be using the naming convention of ports and adapters for the inner layers of the application. So the core is just going to create a new type called arithmetic. It's not going to create a new adapter. And this type is going to implement the interface for core that is required to create a new application. And we're no longer creating a new API adapter either. This is going to be the application. And the application is going to have the port for the database adapter. And of course, this is still using dependency injection. And what's happening here is our gRPC adapter is having the application injected into it. So the actual left side port of our application is going to be located here. And I left a comment here to kind of explain why. It says we use dependency injection to give the gRPC adapter access to the application. Therefore, the location of the port is inverted. So what I mean by the location of the port is inverted is this. Our gRPC adapter parameter contains the port for the left side of the application, but that's because we're using inversion of control. So the gRPC adapter is going to access the application API or the left side port of the application via dependency injection. So the application is actually going to have to be injected into this gRPC adapter. And the gRPC adapter interacts with that interface via dependency injection because it's going to be able to make calls to the injected application. And that's how our gRPC adapter is accessing our technology neutral left side application port. I hope that makes sense. And here it says that we removed the arithmetic.go file, but that's just because we moved it to that application folder. So it's saying that it's removed, but it's just moved. And here, this is our test file. And our test file, if you remember, needs to do a lot of the same things that our command main.go file does. And so that means that whatever changes we had to make to the command main.go file, we also had to make to this test file. And as you can see here, it's the same thing from the main.go file. And then we come down here to this API package. And actually this here should no longer be called adapter. So I'm going to change that as well because this actually returns a new application and it's saying it's of type adapter, but it should be of type application. And this type should be type application struct because again, we're no longer using the ports and adapters naming convention for the inner layers of the application. And this application struct here is going to be returned here as an application struct literal, and that's what's going to be passed to our gRPC adapter. And as you can see here, the port to our application for the database is still going to be here. And this arithmetic type is going to be the core of the application that gets passed to our new application. And here we're just creating this arithmetic interface which is going to be what goes here. So the type that gets passed to this new application is going to be of type arithmetic. So whatever gets passed here is going to need to implement this arithmetic interface. And then it shows our arithmetic package as a new file, but it's just because it got moved to this application's core directory. And if we come down here, these are just the changes that we needed to make to our unit tests, our arithmetic unit tests. So since we're no longer saying that we're creating an arithmetic adapter, we're just going to call the function here new. So that's reflected in all of these unit tests. And again, it's saying that this framework left.go is deleted, but that's just because this got moved as well. And here is the actual port for our driving adapters to interact with. So this is our technology neutral left side port, the entry point to the application. And the only other port we have at this point is this database port. So now we only have two ports and they're stored in two separate files. We have internal ports right.go and we have internal ports left.go. And left contains this port that the driving adapters connects to and right contains 
this port that the driven adapters connects to. And these represent our application boundary. So the only way for outside actors to interact with our application is to either drive the application via this port here or to be driven by the application via this port here. Okay, so now's probably a good time for us to go back to our diagram and attempt to map out everything that's going on here. So at this point, we only have two ports. So we have our right side port here, which is where our database adapter plugs into, and we have our left side port here, which is where our gRPC adapter plugs into. And it's relatively easy to see how the database adapter plugs into the application because we're plugging this adapter directly into the application. And the type for this parameter here is an interface for our right side port. So we can see how our MySQL database adapter is plugging in right here. But what might be a bit more difficult to grasp is how our gRPC adapter is plugging into the application. Because here we have our gRPC adapter, which is having the application injected into it. And this is where what I was mentioning about the location of our left side port being inverted. Because we're using dependency injection to inject the application into our gRPC adapter. And this gRPC adapter's parameter type is the interface for our left side port. So in order for our gRPC adapter to interact with our application, the application is injected into the gRPC adapter, and then the gRPC adapter then has access to the application's API. So it actually looks something like this. We have our gRPC, and it has left port. And here we have our app. And once this app is injected into our gRPC adapter, Within this adapter, we can now make calls to the application. And we could do this with any adapter. So let's say, for example, we have HTTP We'd be able to do the same thing. Within this HTTP adapter, we'd be able to call our application's API. So since we're using dependency injection, the location of the port is inverted. So on our diagram, the port still sits at the same spot. But in our code, you might expect our gRPC adapter to just import the application and then make calls to the application that way. And in that case, the interface that represents the left side port wouldn't sit here as the type for the parameter that's to be passed to our gRPC adapter. But this is how we are defining our ports within this application. So the interface that represents our right side port is actually the type for the parameter that's to be passed to our new application, and that represents our right side port. And the interface that represents our left side port is the type for the parameter that should be passed to our new gRPC adapter, and that represents our left side port. And these two ports are our application boundary. And our application is this hexagon here. And this framework layer is actually not part of our application. Our application starts at this application layer. And of course, we've implemented a domain app split, but this doesn't have anything to do with the ports and adapters architecture. This is just an additional design decision, this domain app split. We could just as easily have this whole hexagon be one monolith. And I'm actually going to leave the first part of this series up so that others can learn from my mistakes, as I actually had a hard time finding resources that didn't merge the explanation of Hexarch with additional design decisions added on top of Hexarch. So these two videos combined should provide a clear distinction as well as some examples of some misconceptions. And also, if you think that improvements can be made to the current state of the application following this video, feel free to leave a comment or submit a pull request to the repository where this application sits. But yeah, that's my implementation of hexagonal architecture. And I'd like to thank both Dr. Alistair Coburn and Juan Manuel de Paz for their encouragement and input on the subject. 
I will provide a link to Juan Manuel Depaz's website in the description, which provides a lot of useful information about the hexagonal architecture. So if you're looking to do some further research, that's a good place to start. And that's going to be it for this video. I hope that these clarifications will be of some use to you, and I'll see you in the next one.